Hi, how are you? Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm Chrissy Red with my transgender point of view. Um, I've always said how grateful I am to be Chrissy Red. I, I still can't believe it sometimes that I think that uh, I live in a society where, you know, I am allowed to be who I have um, felt all along. And the choice, because people say, oh, it's a choice to be transgender and blah, blah, blah. It's a choice to be gay <clears throat> for the gay people. And it's just ludicrous. But the only choice we have is to live in misery or to live as who we are. And that's a choice. We can live in misery, which many of us still do. Or we can live as who we are and who we want to be and to match our bodies to our minds and um, the happiness that comes from that is just so far greater than you know the happiness we can have hiding and pretending to be who we're really not right so I am very very grateful for for um, being here and being who I am I really want to talk in this video about the trailblazers and these um, transgender people that made it possible for us to be here today, for us to have safe uh, and very effective operations. And um, there was a time where, you know, the, the actual physical part of transgendering and, you know, having an operation to change your genitalia to a female from a male you know, you have to use your imagination. It was probably quite horrific, right? So, um, the very, very first one of the of these people who uh, had surgery to change their genders, and I think one of the first documented ones was somebody by the name of Lily Elba, LB, um, born in Denmark um, in the late 1800s. And this person was so radical uh, in being who she wanted to be that she sought out doctors and she sought out these um, the medical profession that were basically highly experimenting on the gender and the genitalia and what can be done down there, what can be cut and what can be removed and really really early times, and this is the late 1800s, um, early part of 1900s, that um, doctors were actually doing this and experimenting and doing all this stuff. Now, uh, this Lily Elby, she was in her late 40s by the time she had hers done, and such a so gung-ho about it she actually agreed to go f full throttle and actually get a uterus implanted in her as well and of course this did not work and I think in a matter of a year or two going through operation after operation to try to not only have a vagina but have a functioning vagina that could um, carry an embryo produce a baby um, and we know today, 2015, that this is un, uh, you know, it's, it's not possible to do it. And really, uh, Lily Elby is, is somebody who really, you know, sacrificed her body to say, you know, oh, oh, okay, we tried, it doesn't work, you know, because she basically died about eight years after she had all her surgeries and stuff, but... From all accounts, she had a very, very uh, fulfilling life, if you think about it. Um, I, I hope her name is remembered, and I know that uh, they are making a movie about her life. I hope it's going to not be that she's this crazy person, you know, doing this stuff. Um, she, Lily was certainly artistic and was certainly in the art world, um, you know, all over Europe so she could be you know looked at as somebody that maybe was a bit eccentric and stuff but if you think about it she probably had 
had to have been a bit nuts to want to, you know, have operations on her body that nobody else has had, documented, documented has had, and literally sacrifice her body to see, you know, for her dreams to come true, but also for these experimenting doctors to find out, oh, does this work? Does this work? Right? So it's quite crazy. And to think that even in the, because she had her operation probably 1930, uh, Lily Elby, and then it started after that. And of course, experiments after experiments. And, you know, I don't have documentation to see how many people it were experimented and then died because of um, what these doctors were trying to do. And for all these people that have, you know, I'm saying hello to your spirits and saying thank you because really it brought us that much closer to where we are today. And other transgender trailblazers that, you know, made it possible for us to be who we are. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm certainly talking way more the males to female transgenders. You know, April Ashley, Christine Jorgensen, very, very um, famous in her day. Uh, Ajita Wilson, she was a black uh, model actress in the 70s that nobody knew that she was transgender. I think nobody knew until after she died, actually. And then, of course, there is the, the famous Bond, the James Bond girl, Carolyn Tula Kasi. Now, same thing with her, you know, reaching the heights of success that you may, somebody like me as a little boy dreaming, geez, could I be a tall, beautiful woman and have a glamorous life? You know, of course, it, it, it sounded impossible at the time. Um, so somebody like Car Carolyn Tulacasi, who became a Bond girl. And of course, you know, as soon as that secret came out, boom, she got hammered with press and, and criticism and has gone since to live a very quiet life. She, and, and again, I've, I've never so said that any transgendered person in the public it's that their duty that they have to get out there and promote and, you know, you know, force worldwide acceptance of transgendered people. I really think it's your choice. You can be a transgendered person and go and live as a hermit in a cabin in the woods for the rest of your life. Or you can go on stage on a platform on a podium to tell your story. And Carolyn Tula Cossie Although she was never forefront in the media, like I'm this, I'm proud, um, what she did, she helped start the laws to change England, the UK, that, you know, if a transgendered woman is um, put in, is charged with something, they can't be put into a male jail, which was the rule back then. doesn't matter if you're transgender or you've had surgery, you have breasts, you're going to the men's prison, you know what I mean? Um, she really started that, um, in its progress to now being that, you know, I'm not even sure if it's fully successful right now, actually. And she also did other things, you know, saying that you can get married, saying that you can, um, change your documentation, your passport genders and stuff like that. But Lily Elby, the, the late 18, 1800s one, she actually was able to, in uh, Denmark and parts of Europe, they approved her uh, annulling her marriage she had with a woman, but also getting her ID and everything to be female. So this is trailblazing time where we think, you know, now here in North America and stuff like, oh, big deal to get your name changed and stuff like that, <laughs> you know, hard fought to get this. Well, no, it's been a long, hard fight. And um, to think that for myself, in Canada, I was able to change my name and do all that stuff before I had the surgery. But I actually had to wait until after the surgery before I could do my birth certificate and my passport. And have that letter of, yes, this person had the operation. I'm hoping that one day that that is not going to be necessary, that it is something that, um, it, you know, you choose your gender and that's it. You choose your gender and maybe you're going to 
choose to go back to your previous gender. You know what I mean? I think it's like you're this gender, that's it, you better stay this gender. It's nuts. Uh, you know, for some people it is uh, ever evolving. Um, for me, and I'm fortunate, like many of us, that I know this is the gender I want. I want to be a girl. And there is no doubts. There is no, mm, you know, today, tomorrow. I'm just one of the fortunate ones in that aspect. So anyway, I wanted to talk about that and I'll throw in a little clip about um, uh, Lily Elby. So you can see for yourself, you know, how interesting it is. And, you know, I would really like again to mention people like April Ashley, a famous uh, 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 entertainer and then model. And then really quite a respected spokesperson for all, for many kind of issues and uh, in England, and she is still alive and still doing well and stunning. And then um, Carolyn Tula Cossie, I'd really like, you know, her to know how grateful I am because she is somebody that I've really wanted to be when I found out in the 80s that she was transgender for me. It was like, oh my God, it's possible. It's possible we can be who we want to be. It's very exciting. And hopefully this video shows that it didn't just start two years ago. It didn't just start with Laverne Cox. It started, you know, it certainly didn't start with Caitlyn Jenner. Um, and Caitlyn Jenner what was certainly alive during the Christine Jorgensen situation, you know. You would hope that would have given her strength back then, but I guess not enough. So we've had people fighting for us to be who we want to be for many, 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 many years. Who knows when it first began? Probably the beginning of humanity, right? So we will talk again soon. I hope you all are doing well and you take care. Lily Alby, in 1930 at the age of 48, underwent multiple surgical procedures in order to change her gender from male to female. This included implanting ovaries from a 26-year-old woman. Eventually, Lily's body rejected the ovaries, and they were eventually removed within a year. She was able to sustain her life until 1940, when she died at the age of 58 years old.